A few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to be interviewed by Joel Sedekes over at the Think Institute, and the topic of our interview was science and God. And throughout the interview, I identified several points that I felt would be beneficial to sort of isolate over here in individual videos on the Catalyzing Faith channel for the sake of further discussion. And the topic that we're going to go into in this particular clip right in this video is the question of, well, if science works, then why do we need to bring God into the picture at all? And the answer really comes from two different angles. The first angle is sort of a philosophical standpoint. It's this overall argument from science that is developed in more detail throughout the interview itself. But the second point tackles this idea of methodological naturalism and identifies some serious concerns with methodological naturalism from a Christian perspective. Lucas, if science works, why do we need God? Why put, doesn't Occam's razor require us to go with the least complicated explanation for things? So if we're saying science works, scientific inquiry gives us truth. Why do we need to put God into the mix? Why can't we just say, let's just do science and science can be neutral territory. Uh, We don't need a God or many gods or, you know, which God. It's just, let's just be rational and scientific about this. How, how do you respond to that? Well, so I guess two, two things. One, are, are you asking about why would we need to do, you know, bring God into the mix when doing science, or why do we need to bring God into the mix at all? Because if it's the la- the, la- the latter, that's kind of the whole point of the discussion is, if you want if you want science at all, God has to be in the mix because God is the only way to explain why science would work in the first place. Love it. Because without God, you don't have a, a, an explanation for the structure of the universe, and you don't have a means by which to get personal agents who can practice science. So that sort of explains why we need God, because scientific truth is not exhaustive truth. So you need, I mean, so there are truths that are outside of science, and and part of that is the justification for science, and that's where God comes in in that respect. If you were asking about sort of why would we need to bring God into the mix when practicing science, so that could be um, sort of responding to methodological naturalism, Um, this this claim that you can practice science without appealing to God, even if you believe in God, right? It's just kind of saying, well, when we do science, we only appeal to naturalistic explanations. We don't appeal to God. Well, I I can, I mean, I see that. I see why a lot of people say that like, oh, well, you just don't bring God into the lab with you. And I, I think a lot of Christians who practice science go about it that way. And Maybe that works a lot of the time, but from a philosophical level, let's think about what, what you're saying. If science, if, if science is a process and you say, when we do science, we get to truth. We get a true, a true answer, right? And then you go ahead and say, well, if we want to practice science, we cannot appeal to God as the explanation. Well, then you're left with a couple of alternatives. Either, really, well, you're only left with one alternative there. And that alternative is God can't exist. So if you actually, sure, methodological naturalism itself does not, is not the same thing as saying God doesn't exist, but methodological naturalism in conjunction with a belief that science gets us to true answers entails metaphysical naturalism. So it entails that God doesn't exist. So as a Christian, we should be pretty concerned about any time we want to say, well, science gets us to truth. And we want to say that, um, we can only appeal to naturalistic explanations. It very well may, may be the case just on principle that God is the explanation for something. Um, and this is why, like, if you take an intelligent design perspective, there's no reason why the violation of methodological naturalism should invalidate from being scientific unless you start with the presupposition that God does not exist. Okay. okay. That was a long so- answer again. No, that, that's, that's really good. You know, something that strikes me about n- methodological naturalism is it assumes you know the way the world is supposed to work, doesn't it? Sans God, without God. Mm-hmm. It, assumes, it assumes that there are these laws that are consistent and reliable over time. 
and, and that you know that those laws and principles will continue on into the future. And what I, what I hear you saying, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, is that that very assumption that induction is possible, that the future will be like the past, that makes good sense if you start from the belief that God exists. Because mm-hmm. if God exists, of course, the laws of physics will continue on into the future. Right. God is faithful, right? Like the Bible tells us this. The Bible might not lay out, the Bible doesn't lay out a lot of these scientific principles, but it lays out a good basis for thinking that we can uncover these principles. Right. And it, and it, it never even goes out and says, hey, do science. You can trust it. But the way the Bible talks about creation and the way the Bible instructs people to view creation it seems to me to strongly indicate that, yeah, we can learn about creation by studying it, you know, and we can learn about it reliably. I mean, not, not infallibly, right? Because we aren't, you know, we're not infallible, but we can learn about the universe by looking at it. I hope you enjoyed that brief discussion on this question of if we have science, then why do we need God? But if you want a little bit more, there are a couple of things that I would like for you to do. First, This argument from science that I discussed is included in a talk that I gave called Truths and Lies on Science and Faith, and I have placed the link to that talk in the description below. Second, if you want to see more from this interview, I have also linked the full interview over at the Think Institute in the description below. So click on the interview, watch the full thing, and While you're there, consider subscribing to the Think Institute in addition to subscribing here at Catalyzing Faith.